Hi, and welcome back. I've got a bit of a confession to make. In all my time in film photography, I've never been interested in shooting 4x5. Realistically, the largest I've ever wanted to shoot has been the panoramic 617 format. Anything larger than that just doesn't float my boat. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't some crazy people out there that do want to shoot 4x5. And after finishing up the design and uh, modeling of the EB617, I actually got a little bored and I needed a new project, something to get my teeth into. And then I thought, well, maybe I could design a 4x5 back that could be added onto the EB617, allowing you to shoot both formats. And so I did a little bit of research on our favorite platform, YouTube. And after watching quite a few videos from a variety of YouTubers, I noticed that there seemed to be one thing in common. The way that film backs tend to attach to 4x5 cameras is, there's no way to put this nicely, stupid. Now I'm going to call out Intrepid on this, but it's not specifically their fault. There are a few different camera designers that all have the same problem. In that they have the ground glass, which is great, and you can focus and uh, get your shot uh, set up. But then to add the film back, they have either elastic bands or rubber straps, or some of them have spring metal that you slot the film unit in between the ground glass and the camera. The result is sometimes it doesn't go in correctly and you get light leaks, or sometimes it goes in correctly but then the ground glass falls off and shatters on the ground. It just doesn't seem to be a very elegant design. I figured there has to be a better way. And looking at the EB617 and cameras like it, there is a better way. The way their film backs connect, it's a very solid connection. There's zero chance of light leaks. The ground glass is always attached to the camera so it can't fall on the ground and shatter. And it just seems to be a much nicer and easier way of working. And so I thought there has to be a way where I can design a 4x5 back with all of this design methodology to use with the camera. So the first step was I got on eBay and ordered a 4x5 film back um, as that would be what I would be designing around. Laying that down on a piece of paper and sketching up some ideas. So the way this normally works is you've got your ground glass which folds out of the way. And then you have your film cassette, which slots into this little lip here. Held in place by these two catches, and you take your shot. Then you remove the film cartridge and fold the ground glass back in place. My theory was I got a 4x5 film back and designed a way so that it would sit in a lip just like the uh, 6x7 back does. So it would sit in that lip and then some kind of catch like this would hold it in place. Um, then I'd have ground glass with the same aspect ratio. Um, that would negate the need of having some kind of you know, either elastic or rubber based system that holds the ground glass out of the way and it slots into and it just never really works very well. So that's the theory. All right, so what I've done is I've basically just sketched the outline of my film cassette and then so around this edge here this is kind of the bottom lip that would sort of catch it so you'll see here there's a indent where the lip would sit over the film cartridge and hold it in place then on either side we have two raised sort of ears that will go to the same height or probably a little bit higher actually than the film cartridge um, that will among other things stop any light coming in from the edges um, and then also sort of design some kind of little catch which will sort of slot in and hold the film cartridge in place whilst you're uh, shooting. And then you undo those catches, take out the uh, film cartridge. So, and then the ground glass would sort of fold back in place over there and those catches would hold it in place as well. Um, so we'd need some kind of little hinges here. And then some arms, sort of arms going up there that would hold the ground glass. So after finishing my sketches, it was time to load up Fusion and actually get into designing. First thing I did was I created a mock-up of the uh, film cartridge uh, in Fusion. Um, as those dimensions aren't going to change, I needed to design my film back around those dimensions. As far as the rest of the unit goes, there weren't really that many limitations. I knew I wanted the width of it to be the same as the EB617's rear standard, so that way it can attach fairly easily. But other than that, there really weren't too many limitations on how I designed it. The only thing I knew I wanted to do was make it easily convertible between uh, portrait and landscape mode. 
um, and I also wanted it to be able to be compatible with the magnetic bellows that I'd already designed for the EV617. The rest of the design I pretty much just sketched the models to look the way I wanted them to look, but there was no specific uh, design parameters that uh, I had to match. I did make use of a lot of the design language of the EB617 um, and I was able to bring over certain parts from the original design and scale them to match uh, 4x5. But getting the unit into a printable state didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it would. So once I had the first prototype of the back printed up, I had to load my very first 4x5 film sheet. After watching quite a few YouTube videos on how to do it, um, I got my film change bag out and after a bit of fiddling around, I actually managed to get one loaded. I then made the arduous trek across my living room to my balcony uh, for my first setup uh, of my test shoot that I was going to shoot uh, with the 4x5 back. Now I'm not going to lie, the very first time I opened up the shutter on the camera with the 4x5 back on it and saw the image on the ground glass, it was pretty special. It was not what I was expecting. Uh, I may be a convert to 4x5 after all, we'll see. Being that I'm fairly comfortable now using the EB617, firing off my first frame on this back uh, wasn't that more complicated. It's pretty much the same process as using the 617, the only difference being in instead of having uh, film going horizontally across, you have a giant sheet uh, on the back. With my first exposure in the can as it were, I was off to develop my first frame. First speed bump was my uh, Jobo uh, film developing tank doesn't have uh, insert for 4x5 film, so it was off to Thingiverse to uh, download and print an insert so that I could uh, put 4x5 film into it. So side project number one. So I mixed up some Cinestill D96 monobath. Uh, this chemistry is amazing. Uh, it is really idiot proof. I have progressively been getting lazier and lazier with this chem um, in terms of temperature, in terms of times, in terms of agitation and no matter what I do I still get an image so I was uh, quietly hopeful that I would actually get something out of my first image. I loaded up silver fast and scanned in my very first exposure from my 4x5 film back and what do you know? perfectly exposed, no light leaks, tack sharp, a perfect image. Considering this is the very first time I've used this film back, it's the very first time I've shot 4x5 and it is a completely new design, the fact that it worked perfectly straight out of the gate is a complete surprise. So let's have a look at the unit. Uh, it's made up of two main parts. You've got the frame that actually mounts uh, on the EB617. Um, it's got neodymium magnets on either side. One side allows you to mount 4x5 bellows which then connect into your front standard of the 617 and then you've got the film back part of the unit. Um, it's got a removable uh, protector for the ground glass um, and I also would add that there is now design files uh, for the EB617 to also add a uh, protector to the ground glass. So if you um, have the uh, EB617, if you go and download the latest build, you'll see that you've got uh, models there to put a protector um, on your ground glass for that camera as well. Then you've got your ground glass, little switches here, which allow you to move it out of the way to insert the film back. Let's pop it on the camera so you can see how it works. Sorry, I've already removed the uh, existing EB617 back from this camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock in the bottom retention screws. And then the top ones still have rise and fall exactly as you do with the EB617, although it has significantly less fall um, just because of the size of the unit, um, but you do have rise on the back, as well as your standard shift. And there is the finished unit. To switch from shooting portrait to landscape, you just have to take it off, switch it across like so. The magnets keep it all registered quite nicely and it holds it in place when you're shooting. To add a film cartridge to it like so, 
slot those in and you can remove your duck slide, take a shot. Like so. Uh, very elegant, very simple design, if I do say so myself. Now, just to make sure that I wasn't lucky and that this was, wasn't a fluke and that it will be the only perfect image I'll ever get out of the camera, I did fire off a couple more test frames, you know, testing out, shooting uh, landscape as well as portrait. Um, and I did discover I had a problem, but not with the camera. It was in developing. I found that the insert that I had printed off uh, for my tank was causing occasionally the film would uh, lay up against the edge of the tank and not develop correctly. Now I did print off a different version, but even with this different version, the way that film tacos in, sometimes, depending on where you put it and so on, um, it would lay up against the edge of the tank and uh, cause developing issues. So I got on the internet and had a bit of a, bit of a research and I found the uh, Steam and Press uh, 4x5 tank which was a custom tank designed specifically for developing 4x5 sheet film. Unfortunately, shipping time was going to be a while and I couldn't wait. So I did the only thing I knew how to do, which was to jump back into Fusion and design my own uh, 4x5 custom tank. So the real question is, now that my testing has uh, succeeded, the film back is working fine, I need to go out and do a real first actual shoot. What am I going to shoot first for the camera? Now I could go out and do a landscape or find a disused petrol station like anybody else, but that's too easy. I decided, no, I'm going to try and shoot the hardest thing possible on a view camera. Yep, that's right, a self-portrait. But how do you shoot a self-portrait with a view camera by yourself? There are several limitations. One focusing. How do you focus from the ground glass if you're not in front of the camera? How do you frame up a shot if you're not in the shot? And then how do you actually fire the frame, being that these cameras only fire via cable release? I don't have a long enough cable release to uh, actually fire it by holding it out of shot, so I needed to figure out some solutions. As far as firing the shutter goes, it turns out people solved this problem many, many years ago. A mechanical timed shutter release. This is known as an auto nips, uh, and its function is incredibly simple. Uh, it attaches to your regular film shutter release cable. Um, in my case, mine is too big, so I actually had to uh, super glue it on. Not my finest work. Um, I will eventually purchase a shutter cable that fits it perfectly, uh, but this will work for now. To use it, all you do is you wind up the unit, there's a switch on the side, and you release it. And what it does is it slowly winds forward, depressing your shutter release. Now you don't know exactly when it's going to fire, but for the purposes, this is going to do the trick. So as far as setting up the shot goes, that's where things got a little bit weird. My good friend Bob stood in for me, uh, as I was able to actually at least set up the framing of my shot and get a fairly good approximation of focus. Lighting's a little bit trickier, being that it's kind of hard to see how lighting affects a giant white head, but I figured the best I could. Now, then it came to the fact of how am I actually going to see where I am in the shot, make sure that where I'm standing is also correct, being that I'm not standing behind the ground glass. So that's where I used 20th century technology on 19th century technology. I got my digital camera pointed at the ground glass. I then had that connected to an HDMI cable to a TV that was just off frame. So I was able to stand in where I thought my place was and I, could, I, I was able to put tape marks uh, on the ground and I could set up exactly where I should stand. Now this wasn't going to be perfect um, because once again being that I'm a genius I decided to shoot wide open at 5.6 which meant that my focus was going to be within about that far so I had to make sure that I knew exactly where I was I needed to stand um, and also where I was left and right as well as uh, forward and back of the frame. That being said I set everything up, I metered uh, for 5.6, which gave me a shutter speed of uh, 1 15th of a second, so I knew I was going to have to hold very, very still. Uh, I was shooting on HP 5 Plus, so that's ISO of 400. So I set up my first frame and fired the shot. I decided to shoot off a second exposure at F8, which gave me a shutter speed of uh, 1 8th of a second, uh, which meant I was going to have to hold very, very still. 
So now that I've fired off my uh, frames, I needed to load my film into my new canister. Um, I uh, had treated myself and purchased a new film change tent because uh, I definitely found with the loading and unloading of the uh, 4x5 film bags, you do need a little bit more space than in your standard change bag. Uh, so the change tent was a massive improvement. So once I had my film loaded up in my new uh, film developing tank, it was time to develop. Have to say, the experience was a lot better than using a standard film tank. For some reason, it was a lot less messy. There was a lot less uh, liquids everywhere spilling around. Um, and I was able to develop the film with basically no mess, no fuss. And I got my first two images of my portrait. So I loaded up Silverfast and scanned in the images. Here's the first image, shot 5.6, which was at 1 15th of a second. And here's my second shot, which was shot at f8 at 1 8th of a second. As you can see, I did move, and so it was a little bit blurry. So there you have it, a 4x5 film back for the EB617. If you've already purchased the 3D models for an EB617 any time in the past, this is a totally free update for you. All you have to do is request a new download link, and you'll see in the zip folder there is a separate folder for 4x5 film back, which contains all the models that you'll need to print to make your own 4x5 film back. You will obviously need to add a ground glass and uh, your own set of bellows, although they are also available for purchase on the website uh, if you don't want to make your own. There is also the ability uh, for people who want to purchase a pre-made uh, 4x5 uh, kit, which also comes with ground glass and bellows um, that they can uh, use with their cameras uh, without having to make it themselves. So that's about it for today. Happy shooting, and until the next time, say hi to your dog for me.